no economic theory supports the notion that if you lay off a lot of teachers and social workers and police uh, officers and firefighters, if you pull back on contracts uh, with, uh, for highway construction, for everything else, that you are going to create jobs. Uh, in fact, it doesn't even hold logically. Mm -mm. Uh, and what we've seen over the last three years is that as the states and localities have cut their budgets, uh, that has contributed significantly to our overall jobs problem. Uh, the reason we have zero, we had zero job growth in August uh, is that you had 17,000 jobs lost in the public sector and 17,000 jobs gained in the private sector. Well, those public sector jobs are being lost uh, at a very rapid rate, much rap more rapidly than 17,000. Uh, 17,000 is the least of it. Uh, and that is uh, an ongoing problem. If people don't have jobs, they don't have money in their pockets. They can't turn around and buy, and that means that other people uh, lose their jobs. Consumers and consumer spending represents 70% of the economy. Consumers are workers. Workers are consumers. If they are not able to spend because they don't have a job or they have only a part-time job or they, their pay is going down, then we can't sustain the economy, then businesses are not going to hire. It doesn't matter how many tax breaks businesses get, they're not going to hire if they don't have customers. This is economics 101. Yeah. Uh, and so we've got to make sure, uh, in terms of reviving this economy, uh, that average workers do better. Uh, the, you know, the, the surge toward inequality that we've experienced over the last 30 years is now coming home to roost, uh, because uh, uh, you know, it, was, it was masked for many years by women going into paid work, by everybody working longer hours, and then everybody going uh, deeper and deeper into debt. Uh, but we can't mask that surge toward inequality any longer. When uh, almost a quarter of all total income is going to the top 1%, the vast middle class, working class, and the poor do not have enough purchasing power to keep the economy going. Uh, so uh, even if we succeeded in getting enough pump priming to begin to get the economy going again, we would still run into this uh, deeper problem of widening inequality. We've got to tackle that as well. And the way you begin to tackle that is through real tax reform. Uh, that says uh, we've got to expand the earned income tax credit, which is a wage subsidy for the poor. Uh, we've got to uh, lower taxes on the working class, um, and we've got to raise taxes on people who are making the most money in society. You almost did that in Minnesota, uh, and I'm not going to be so presumptuous as to comment on what happened here, but uh, the top 1% taking home an almost record percentage of total uh, national income uh, and the top 1% paying a federal income tax rate that is one of the lowest they have paid uh, in the last 80 years, yeah. well, it, it just, not only is it unfair, but it doesn't make any economic sense.